Um, thank you, Laura. Thank you, Little Tuxent. Um, uh, to those of you who live in Colombia, uh, I'm sorry about your loss today. Uh, gathering together to uh, share literature seems like a healthy alternative than being in front of CNN right now. Um, uh, let me see. The, uh, I have copies of my book, Float, here for sale. If you'd like to see me afterwards, I've got copies of Float. I, uh, odd coincidence, uh, there is a Kelecanth fossil in this book. Uh -huh. So, we're all on the same page. Uh, the essay I'm going to read, one takes place in Gloucester, Mass., which is farther away from here than Boston. An hour farther north. Um, I, it, it is an essay, it's short, I'm sorry, I'll just read the whole thing, but uh, it's already been anthologized, coming out in an anthology later this year, Women in Nature. Um, and I have, um, with proper credit, of course, to the talks that we do. And um, now I've been asked to edit their next series, uh, Women in Nature, Personal Essays uh, Displaced. This is the name of the essay. Have you been to the beach today, Caroline asked. There's the oddest animal by the boathouse steps, run down before the tide takes it away. Caroline's call came in the aftermath of a late winter storm off the Atlantic, a long arm of a beast that had swept out to sea, then curved back to hit us like a fist. The gale blew for 70 hours, and rain battered the earth. Now that it was over and the wind had died, I could hear the ocean continue to pound the beach like a war drum. Is it dead or alive, I asked, wondering whether to bring a camera or a cage. Oh, it's quite dead, she said. If not, we're in trouble. I've never seen anything like it. I couldn't wait. The words gruesome discovery make me light right up. Caroline is over 80 and has lived on the beach for 60 years, so if something she couldn't identify washed up, it had to be good. Maybe even as good as the giant squid in recent headlines. <clears throat> Japanese scientists in a submarine dove down to the sunless world where the cephalopod lived and took the world's first photo of the living entity in all its undulating glory. Before that, its existence was known only in myth or in death, when a 50-foot carcass might wash ashore to the horror of the locals who would then eat it. Perhaps this mystery creature on the beach would be my giant squid, something revealed only to a special few. We are so physically and psychologically removed from what goes on in the aquatic world it was not inconceivable that a storm of this magnitude could dislodge such a beast. Sometimes it takes turmoil and chaos to bring something new up from the darkness. I grabbed my camera and called my dog Daisy to help me find whatever it was I was looking for. As we walked, my mind was awash with exotic possibilities. If the ocean's inhabitants are stranger than we think, they are sometimes stranger than we can even imagine. Consider the Yeti crab with its tiny body and huge hairy arms. It was discovered only in 2005 next to a 700 degree hydrothermal vent near the Easter Islands, where the surrounding waters are just above freezing. Pure white, and as its name suggests, looking more like a baby abominable snowman than a crab, it would be quite a sight at our Massachusetts beach.